How far would you go for your faith? Tonight, over 100 churches stand in defiance of local laws banning the use of something shocking from their services. Poisonous serpents. Yes, it's snakes on a pulpit. These Christians say they are true believers and that vipers are as vital to their religion as the Bible itself. The tradition dates back more than a century, but lawmakers aren't so sure it should survive. I headed down south for our series, Faith Matters. <laughs> What Pastor Jamie Coots is doing with this poisonous snake is either a Christian ritual or a criminal conduct, depending on who you ask. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In tiny churches tucked away in rural Appalachia, what began generations ago as an expression of faith is turning into a fight over religious freedom in America. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Coots and his followers believe they are called by God to handle venomous serpents. It comes from a passage straight from the Bible, which they take literally. They pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. In this small church of fervent believers, we saw the pastors lay hands in healing prayer and dance with collective adrenaline. Pastor Andrew Hamlin appears almost possessed by the Holy Spirit as he handles poisonous snakes. Even if bitten, they often refuse medical treatment and rely instead on prayer for healing, even speaking in tongues. Where's the cotton mouth at? But local authorities see the snakes as a reckless, dangerous menace to public safety that's already taken lives and will take others. He admitted that he had snakes and took us to the church and our officers went in, picked the snakes up out of his uh, snake room and seized them. Earlier this month, the state of Tennessee seized 50 poisonous snakes from Pastor Hamlin and cited him for illegally possessing them. I am in the United States of America and I have a constitutional right as a you know, at my right mind adult, that if I believe so strongly that the Spirit of God moves on me to take up serpents, that I should have my constitutional right to do it. How on earth is handling a snake a religious expression? Uh, just the same way, uh, to me, taking up serpents in our religious ceremonies is just like uh, the Catholic who use wine in their communion on Sundays. Well, I read about Using snakes during services is a long-standing tradition, one that took root here more than a century ago. Coots's own grandfather handled serpents as a Pentecostal preacher, as did his father. Lead us and guide us in the way. Four generations now, including his grown son. Oh, Lord, we believe you, Lord. Good Coots also mentored Hamlin here in Kentucky, but now Hamlin lives and preaches over the border in Tennessee, which has stricter laws against even owning deadly snakes. They come right into the house of God and just ripped them away. That'd be no different if they come in and ripped your Bible out of First Baptist. In court last week, Hamblin entered to applause from his supporters, all wearing red, as he pled not guilty to possession of dangerous wildlife. If God moves on me and I feel led through and by the Holy Ghost to reach my arm into a box of rattlesnakes, I should have my religious right to do that. But the District Attorney General, Lori Phillips-Jones, says the law applies to everyone and doesn't discriminate based on a person's faith. It's not a religion issue. Um, it's an issue of possessing animals that Tennessee law says you're not allowed to possess them. Because it's dangerous to other right, people, right? right? Because right. of the nature of the animal. It's estimated that 125 churches use poisonous snakes during services in the U.S., many clustered in the South. Both preachers offered a rare glimpse inside this extreme branch of the Pentecostal tradition for the Nat Geo show Snake Salvation. But after it aired, Tennessee authorities cracked down. There could be an argument that you're going after this case because it became a high-profile television case. It's a violation of the law. Lots of people speed. But if you pull up to a police car and race your engine and take off at extreme speed, you should expect to get caught. So that was a sort of tantamount to taunting law enforcement. But the prosecutor says people began complaining once they saw what was going on inside the homes and houses of worship in their neighborhood, afraid snakes might get loose. The list just goes on and on for qualifications that you have to meet to possess these species. And, you know, 
obviously a small church building with a locked door doesn't qualify. Oh my golly. Okay, please tell me they're all in cages. But Coots has a permit to keep his 20 or so snakes. He even brought us to his backyard snake shack to show us how he boxes up serpents before his service. This is the biggest rattlesnake we have left, the cane break. In fact, the Tennessee law banning ownership was passed back in 1947, after five worshipers were killed over the course of two years. Pastor Coots even had a parishioner die in 1995 after refusing anti-venom following a rattlesnake bite. No charges were ever filed in Kentucky. If someone gets bit in my church and they're not immediate family, I will call 911, have the paramedics come out, and let that person tell them, I don't want medical attention. Bitten here. Coots himself has been bitten nine times. A rattlesnake bit me here. Each time he refused medical attention. A rattlesnake here. The worst time, Coots says, was when a timber rattler bit his middle finger. It was the most pain I guess I've ever felt in my life during the time that it was rotten and I knew something was going on. I just didn't know what for the first month. That much of the bone was exposed before it broke off. That's crazy. Not so much as a Advil? No. Not so much as a aspirin? No. Why keep it? My wife told me when this broke off in the yard, she said, I want to keep this. I said, why? She said, I want to keep that. I said, why? She said, I'll always have a piece of you no matter where you go. Very nice. You're the uh, rockabilly preacher who charms snakes. Well, I don't charm them. The Lord does, but <laughs> we'll go with the rockabilly preacher, I guess. <laughs> so you don't think you're taking the Bible out of context or too literally? No, ma'am. Not at all. I mean, I mean, to me, that's what God taught us or taught me to be right. I mean, I'm not telling people to go out here and handle snakes. To me, a cult is somebody that stands up and says, if you don't do this, you're hell bound and you're not a part of us. Are you a cult? No, we're not a cult. We're Christians. If you've got a husband or wife. We're just like any other Christian on the face of this earth. Do you see this as religious persecution? I do, in a, in a form it is religious persecution. I'm not asking no one to agree with me. I'm not asking no one to believe like me. I've never told anybody they have to take up serpents to go to heaven or they have to take up serpents to be a Christian. If they're lying, cheat, steal it, fornicate. Yeah. Coot says they live by a stricter moral code than most. The Holy Ghost ain't there no more. And if their way of life, along with the way they choose to worship, sets them apart, they believe it brings them closer to God. It's an inner peace. You don't think about nothing else. You have a love for everybody. There, there's no ill feelings, no nothing in your mind except, you know, God has honored me to let me feel His Spirit. Some people feel that that is the presence of God, and some people think it is a biochemical reaction that your body is having to fear, to danger, to life and death situations. If the Bible told me to jump out of an airplane, I would. The district attorney says public opinion is split on the matter, half supporting the argument for public safety, the rest telling her to keep off the altar. The other half of the backlash is people are saying that you're overzealous, that you are, yes. you know, grandstanding to try to make a case. Correct. And uh, we feel we're just enforcing the law, just trying to keep the public safe and make sure that the law is followed. Do you see yourself handling snakes in the future? Honey, I see myself as long as there's breath in my body taking up serpents. I, I've come too far, I, I can't back down on it. I've seen too many miracles happen in churches. For his sect, God's law trumps man's law. And next month, Hamlin will have another chance to make his case in the fundamental struggle between church and state in a Tennessee courtroom. The Lord will provide. Amen. 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 Amen.